Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I wanna talk about an interoperability project that has not yet launched its mainnet. Its mainnet is supposedly around the corner, except they won't give a hard date on that. It is called Zeta Chain. It's got almost 1 million followers over on Twitter. So this, and it's kind of a new chain to me, so I hadn't heard about it. But they say here, simple, fast, and secure omni-chain blockchain. Build interoperable dApps, span chains from Ethereum to Bitcoin and beyond. Access all of crypto from one chain. And so I really like that they say Ethereum to Bitcoin and beyond because a lot of these cross-chain, omni-chain projects, they claim to be that, and then they'll only restrict themselves to something like EVM and maybe one other non-EVM some of the time. But this one looks like it is trying to encompass a lot, and we're gonna get to that. Speaking of multi-chain interoperability, my favorite project, if you've watched the channel, is ThorChain. And one of the early contributors to ThorChain, Panruo Wu, uh, is also one of the contributors to this project is there as, as well. So maybe there's some alpha in there. It's not being tracked, like I said, on CoinMarketCap or on CoinGecko because it is not in mainnet yet and their official token has not launched. From stats from their website, I thought we're sharing, and obviously this is gonna be testnet, right? 14 plus million cross-chain transactions, 200 plus ecosystem partners, and over 3 million testnet users. Likely chasing the airdrop, and there is gonna be an airdrop. We're gonna talk about the, to the tokenomics a little bit later. But I don't wanna reiterate all this. One entry point into all of crypto, I think you get the idea. You'll just have a one-stop shop. You can go to Zeta Chain. And then theoretically, you can do everything that you want on all of these other blockchains. The best resource I found was actually shared from their Discord group. They've got a really helpful community over there in Discord, so go and check them out. But th this is a report from Delphi Digital, and it talks about their competitors, what they do, all that. It's a really long read. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see the bar at the side here, but I can scroll for like a week down this thing. But I've tried to reduce it into the parts I found most interesting and have highlighted, so we're gonna go through those. So what exactly is it? I loved it right off the bat. It's ThorChain with smart contracts. So if you're familiar with ThorChain, that might be something that gets you excited, or if you're more familiar with Axelar, Axelar with EVM on it. And the key here is they say, Zeta should be the place users stay, not merely a tool, they use to pass through. The upside for Zeta is with its omni-chain EVM smart contracts, which I guess is where it is really unique. So if you use ThorChain or even Layer Zero, those are really just middleware in between. You don't really go to Layer Zero. You're doing a swap on Rango Exchange or maybe somewhere else, and Layer Zero is just infrastructure on the back end but it's not where you end up staying. It's just something that you're passing through. So they want to change that on Zeta Chain. They want it to be a place that you actually go. It is a proof of stake blockchain built with the Cosmos SDK like ThorChain. And there might be a lot of ThorChain comparisons because they do mention that it is the, it is the closest design to Zeta Chain. It being a Cosmos SDK, that means it does have five second block times and they say instant finality. I'm not sure if the if Cosmos SDK is necessarily instant finality, they may have tweaked it a little bit, or maybe that is just a feature of Cosmos SDK tendermint uh, type things, and I just learned something new every day. Zeta is gonna have their own layer one and token, Zeta, which is used to pay for gas on Zeta chain as well as staking. Like ThorChain, Zeta uses their Zeta token as a routing token for cross-chain messaging, although the entire protocol does not depend on Zeta LPs to the same extent as ThorChain does. So if you're familiar with how ThorChain works, it's very dependent on the liquidity pools. It does rely on it much more than a protocol like Axelar though, and I'm not that familiar with Axelar. So this is what it looks like from high level. You go from any chain, an observed transaction happens, it hits the Zeta, Zeta client, and then I believe the, the Zeta chain, which is being validated by nodes, and then outbound transactions to any chain or any layer. So the observers here, which look like they're part of this node structure, they need to run full nodes of the external chain. This makes running a Zeta node more resource intensive than a standard chain and is similar to ThorChain. This is one of the reasons why ThorChain has not added support for Solana because you have to run a full validator node. Each node has to run a full node for each chain it integrates with. And Solana is very intensive and expensive, at least right now to my understanding. 
So their architecture here enables two key features. You've got omni-chain smart contracts, and then you've got cross-chain message passing. So the omni-chain smart contracts are smart contracts on the ZEVM, and cross-chain message passing, on the other hand, purely uses Zeta and the ZEVM as a relayer of messages and of the Zeta token. And one of the big comparisons with this is layer zero, which we are going to get into. Cross-chain message passing. It's used to route messages to from other chains by using Zeta chain in the middle. So like layer zero being in the middle, in this use case for Zeta chain, Zeta chain is just in the middle. For Zeta chain, their cross-chain messaging protocol is facilitated by the use of their native token, which is fundamentally different than their competitors who do not rely on their native token for value transfer, except for ThorChain. The best way to visualize this, they say here, is to use an example. So we're gonna say, swap 1.2 ETH on Polygon for USDC on Ethereum. The path, you know, it would look like this. ETH is swapped for Zeta. Zeta is sent to Zeta Chain. Zeta is routed from Zeta Chain to Ethereum. Zeta gets swapped for USDC on Ethereum and then sent to the user's wallet. So really, if you think about it, you could do all of this yourself, really. You know, ETH is swapped for Zeta. You could do that. Zeta is sent to Zeta Chain. You could maybe send Zeta to your wallet or something like that. Zeta, you could bridge it over to Ethereum, swap it for USDC on Ethereum, and then you would receive it. So really, the benefit here, at least the way I interpret this, is it's more of a convenience sort of benefit. Really, what's going to be the game changer, I think, for layer zero, because layer zero, in the same way, is sort of just a convenience thing, is going to be when you'll be able to do different actions from one chain to another. Like, if you were to say, I start with Bitcoin on the native Bitcoin chain, and what I want to do is stake USDC in an Aave vault, and all you have to do is hit one button to go Bitcoin to USDC, stake it in an Aave vault, that would be huge. And I think that's where these type of projects are inevitably looking to go. This is a very capital intensive architecture though. You need to have stable coins and, and money locked up to kind of all this, all this passing through, right? In addition to the capital efficiency, cross-chain message passing is highly competitive area and not one where we believe Zeta Chain can really offer a unique advantage. With omni-chain smart contracts though, they think that they can. So this is their main benefit. So these omni-chain smart contracts, first, they allow for interactions with assets like Bitcoin, Doge, and Litecoin, and others that do not support smart contracts natively, which is big in my opinion. Second, it reduces the attack surface of exploits as the application state sits on Zeta itself. Third, it creates an economy that resided on Zeta chain where users will stay and interact. So that goes to what they were saying earlier. You go to Zeta Chain and you're doing this stuff with Bitcoin and Doge and interacting with smart contract platforms itself, but you're doing it on their platform. And lastly, it does not rely on Zeta token liquidity for value transfer. And they say this, referring to the Omnichain smart contracts, is a product that none of the competitors have outside of Axelar, but Axelar uses Cosmwasm instead of EVM and is not really seen that much adoption so far. Zeta Chain has a unique structure, but more importantly, you can build unique things on top of it, like a Bitcoin-backed Omnichain stablecoin, Omnichain perp dex, Omnichain yield aggregator, and I'm sure much more. So maybe to wrap up some of this, the cross-chain messaging platforms today, like Layer Zero, are mostly used as back-end infrastructure, but Zeta Chain can create their own economy on Zeta Chain. On to Layer Zero. Why are they different? How does Layer Zero work? Layer Zero is the largest competitor to Zeta Chain when it comes to cross-chain message passing, not the Omnichain smart contracts. I don't wanna get too into the tech of Layer Zero. I did a review video on this a long time ago, but they sum it up pretty well here. This design, see that you've got a relayer and an oracle. The design essentially boils down to a two of two multi-sig where the main trust assumption is that Google Cloud and Layer Zero will not collude with each other. Although recently Layer Zero announced a ZK Lite client from Polyhedra ZK to replace the Oracle role if applications don't wanna rely on Chainlink or Google. A lot of new protocols are taking on these OFTs and ONFTs from Layer Zero. So the OFT standard uses Layer Zero to burn and mint tokens when crossing chains. This allows any token that's, that's adopted the OFT standard to issue their token and have it more freely 
and have it move more freely between multiple chains without involving wrapping and locking in bridges. And then this article ends with this here, Zeta first ThorChain. ThorChain with smart contracts. Zeta does, does share notable similarity to ThorChain. For native Bitcoin swaps, ThorChain is the market leader and there is no second best. Unlike ThorChain, ZetaChain does not need to rely on their own token for every application like ThorChain does for swaps, savers, lenders, and upcoming perps. And I do wonder if Zeta is, it's not going to have to be paired with every single pool. So there is a little bit of whenever rune price moves up and down, it might have impacts on ThorChain that if the Zeta token did the same thing over on ZetaChain, might not be as impactful or have any impact at all. So while they do support native Bitcoin, the addition of an EVM and smart contracts makes Zeta a fairly different protocol than ThorChain. And I wonder how Maya protocol is gonna fit into this as well because Maya protocol is a ThorChain fork, although they are actually going to have smart contracts with their layer one uh, called Aztec. So we'll see. On to the tokenomics here, and this was actually just published uh, about four days ago. In the chart here, it shows a total supply of 2.1 billion. I tried to confirm if this was going to be a max cap or if there's gonna be the, like that's the initial, but there's inflation on the circulating supply or something like that. And at least in time for recording this video, I haven't been able to get an answer to that. Someone in the Discord did say that it was going to have uh, inflation forever, but I didn't, I didn't see anything official about that. If you've been doing the testnet, then you probably are going to be getting an airdrop from this user growth pool, which is for Zeta Point Earners and Zeta Lab Snapshot, participants in Quest campaigns, and then they've also got 6%, which is to be announced. So 10% getting airdrop to the community, it looks like, and then the rest of it is sort of in the control of the protocol itself. So you've got an ecosystem growth fund, validators, liquidity incentives, the treasury, 24%, core contributors, 23%, let's call it, and then early purchasers and insiders. So this is about 60% just right here in these three. I was trying to figure out at what price the early investors got in at, but it's kind of tough to do because they lumped the 16% in with advisors and purchasers. So I assume that the advisors got it for free and the purchasers had to pay some money, which is 336 million of the token. So I did some math here, and I just said that, let's assume that the even the, the advisors had to pay for it. 16% of the 2.1 billion went to pur purchasers, that's 336 million coins. 27 million was raised, which would be eight cents per token. So the fully diluted value on the 2.1 billion would be a launch at 170 million, although you would imagine that the price is going to be much higher than that especially considering there's a million followers of this project over on Twitter, and it seems to be a legitimate project. So if you're gonna get the airdrop on this one, I think that this one is gonna do pretty well for you. Another thing I couldn't find in here is the emission schedule. So I'm not sure how long it's gonna take for these coins to be in circulation. So what do you guys think? Could this one do better than ThorChain in the, uh, the cross-chain space with native swaps? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. If you're still here, Please do hit the like button, subscribe, and I hope you got some value out of this video, and I'll see you on the next one.